All right, Dr. Sharma, you're alive. Room six, brand All new right. cath lab. All right, is room, that's it. The, you started with a brand new cath lab and I really welcome again uh, our excellent discussion. I mean, I, I would say the, the mission or the theme or aim we had for the symposium is working out very good. Only thing is I see la less people in the front. I saw when I left, a lot of people in the back. They should come in the front and uh, enjoy yeah. Uh, and take the advantage of all the live cases and so. So with that note, we show the case number four is a 78 year old patient who had a cabbage before and then was presented to outside hospital with chest pain and had a leave, the rema to the RCA of OM was occluded. And they worked on the native, the left main to uh, OM or circumflex, which I am going to show and try to open it. Uh, the, let's go through beginning uh, very quickly and patient is on good medical therapy, good, uh, good ejection fraction, this is the right coronary and this is the bypass to the right which is two graphs very good, then to the diagonal very nice, then there is a lima to LED which is good and then the rima uh, to the OM is occluded and this is where it is. One layer they, what they did is, it was calcific, severe calcium. I have the angiogram from outside. Severe calcium, and then they uh, did a balloon and put a stent. They thought that they have expanded it. They put the stent here, as you can see, 3.5 millimeter, and then did not see the stent could not be expanded exactly at the, in the center. Mm. So then they did IVL 4.0. Multiple dilatation of the IVL 40 could not expand. This is just about a few weeks ago. So patient has been now referred to me that what to do. So clearly that uh, uh, can we do a atherectomy, rotation atherectomy. So we felt that it's a good case of unexpanded stent, which you can use various techniques. Starting with a laser, rotation atherectomy, a high pressure balloon or cutting balloon won't help in this situation. And then IVL already had been tried and they could not expand this. So IVL was done post stenting, but not wow. done the pre, but a lot of calcium there. Yeah. So anyway, we are here. Can we show the IVAS? We did the IVAS in this particular case. Oh, and you were able to, to pass an IVAS the there. The That's cool. Yeah. Okay. IVAS there, yeah. Yeah, here. So we start. Play the IVAS from distal to the enlarged OM. There's a plaque there, which we know, moderate disease. Just looks and like they don't even the have that, all that disease covered. Yeah. At all. Yep. So that is a separate. They did not cover the entire disease. Now, this is a distal part of the stent, which is okay. Yeah. Which we saw angiographically. If they see the calcium behind, there's still a mm -hmm. lot of circular calcium. And this is where they have the totally unexpanded stent right there. The yeah. MLA, we found a 2.7. This is the proximal part and then comes to the left main. So this is a case of the unexpanded stent. So but also a lot of tissue now, proliferation the, yeah. inside of that stent, Distally, which yeah. is. Which is Unexpected. interesting. Well, we yeah. have an amazing so no, panel here. Point. We have a great panel here, and I'm going to go to Dr. O'Neill first and foremost. Welcome to New York. Yeah. It's wonderful to have you here, Dr. O'Neill, <laughs> William O'Neill, pioneer course, in our field. What a, you you must see a lot of this type of stuff in all the years that you've been treating complex disease, an underexpanded stent in a pre, you know, in a in a in a calcific lesion. What's your approach? The uh, vessel wound itself was actually relatively large, so for vessels that are sort of less than two millimeters, we try to actually uh, burr out by using rotational atherectomy to really kind of remove them. And that didn't cause micro fractures, so that allows expansion. I, I would be really curious in this setting whether or not a shockwave would actually work to try to uh, micro. I can't hear fully. It looks like it's something they did after they stented when they recognized that this was a issue and it looks like they didn't get anywhere. Dr. Nicholson, uh, what's your approach here? What would be your approach? Yeah, thanks. Uh, you know, I mean, I think you really have two choices in these scenarios. I think uh, coring it out with the larger and larger rotaburn would be one option. And then uh, this is one of the places I think uh, laser is very helpful with a one floor laser with max fluency, max frequency all the time. You need to augment with contrast injections to get the cavitary kind of uh, explosions that you need, but it, it find that to be very effective in these scenarios. It, it, all the treatments, if you did lithotripsy as well, 
And I'm curious what Dr. Sharma is going to do. I mean, all of them basically take the polymer off the yeah. stent. So you yeah. converted it to a bare metal stent. So uh, I don't know what before we go to Dr. Sharma, I just want to hear Dr. Colombo's uh, approach to this. I know that you have yeah. treated this a lot. But Dr. Colombo? If, uh, if you can uh, afford the laser with contest injection, it's really nice. Yeah. I assume lithotripsy was already used. Uh, and if they size the balloon correctly, I would not use it again. Uh, if it was done correctly. Rotablation is a, is a good uh, possibility, but you need a big burr because the lumen, the residual lumen is large. Uh, in Europe, uh, the most practical is a very high pressure balloon. Yeah, I've seen you uh, do that. And we have cases, balloons from CIS Medical, uh, they go to 44 atmosphere. Yeah, that's uh, a little crazy What you need exposure. is to be Precise and not to under to oversize, otherwise uh, you have to go to the drug or to the cover stent. But uh, if these uh, a little bit undersized, uh, you can go to 44, and uh, most of the time you succeed. Yeah, so we have a 50 50, I think, vote for laser and rotational atherectomy. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I don't. I don't really like that high pressure balloon. I, I get nervous, but I've seen you do it, Doctor Colombo. No. So what's your what's your approach? Yeah, but I saw, uh, but I remember that really high pressure that uh, that high pre that high pressure balloon, uh, Roxana. That open and C is is a double layer balloon, not available in America yet. Yeah. It's many places outside. Uh, there's use for that purpose. So let me just go through, knowing that we had other interesting case. So here, what we did is uh, we are eight French guys. And we did, this is IVAS, which we showed, and then we, we use a 2 bar. So we are here now after the 2 bar, and this is a picture after 2 bar. And we are ready with a bigger bar, as mentioned, with a 2.15, because this case will require a bigger bar. And now we actually have the laser ready. Now, question is, uh, just to answer, why not laser? This patient, because we have success, this is case referred and the referred basically for rotablation. But we have the laser clearly with the contrast laser will be the second choice in this particular case. Or maybe for some people could be the first choice. So we had done a 2 over. bar. Now we are going with a 2.15 with my associate Parushram here and we are two fellows, uh, Twinkle and Jonathan. So all, and of course rest of my cat lab staff, all ready to 2.15. Now biggest question here will be that bar can get stuck, stored in this unexpanded stand, very common. So had to be very, very careful. And if we cannot even go completely, which is okay, because you can just go inside and people ask, are you going to ablate the stent? You have to pull a little more harder, no? Yeah, 2.15, you know the guy, yeah, good. So we are okay. So why, so key is that even you don't go completely, I know there are enough data now, they have seen that when you stent, get ablated because you see the microparticles in, in, vi in vitro and otherwise also by the OCP after the rotablation. So you'd really create a cracks or, you know, my, of course, the, uh, that part, the polymer is all gone. And so, so here with the 2.15, we'll be very careful. We want to make sure we do our three things back and forth here uh, at the level at the Y connector and a tap on the dinoglide, which nothing happened. Now we are ready. With a 2.15 bar. How did the 2 bar go when yeah. you were going with the 2.0? Okay. It was a little tough. It took, uh, took us about uh, uh, four runs. Okay. Each run is about 20 seconds. But same. The key is careful. Don't go. Now, many times we have seen your bar does not traverse. But what it does, it heats up the metal. And then your subsequent balloon dilatation opens it up. And I want to keep it within the stent only. And 20 second ablation. Same. Uh, the, our, the CVT will tell us that it's more than 20 seconds. We are main looking at the blood pressure. Nurses automatically give neosinephrine. Once it goes down to in uh, less than 100 systolic pressure, here we need a little push. Uh, and uh, blood this should be showing the hemodynamics one side also. Yeah. Pressure What's the RPM up. you're choosing uh, for these? Yeah, 150. Right now, 150. Uh, if we need to go to further, we'll go further. Okay, but so you start our a goal is lower. that if you eight times, yeah, 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 150. Most of the our procedures are done with a 150. You know the rotor oh, probe. You just went through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The rotor pro, uh, I actually uh, had a lot to do design. So now, when you start your rotablation, you have the the actually you start with 155. 
so you can increase or decrease but company makes a, it comes as a marketed with a 155 speed which can as i said increase or decrease so now we are done the rotablation will put a wire side by side and go to the high pressure balloon uh, 40 we have yeah, yeah, 40 yeah, yeah. Uh, no no 8 we need short oh we have a short yeah right now we need a short 3.5 or 40 remember we cannot have the long balloon you need to expand short balloon knowing that we don't have an open NC, which Colombo spoke about, uh, which can go to 40 atmosphere and so. Huh? So oh. you'll take a non-compliant short balloon trying to really short push balloon. it out. That area, yeah. Because remember, even you go and magnify. So if you see, it was just that area. Now, actually, you see a little bit of expansion, although people say maybe imagination. But most of the time, I don't think that the rotablation of blade they stand. What it does basically uh, is it may uh, heat it up. Your subsequent balloon dilatation will then expand. Now we are 408 NC ready. I am still going to leave the rotor wire just to get that extra mileage. And if not, we have outside the laser ready because we are next. Another case in the afternoon, we have yeah. an eczema laser case. Yeah. So, so if this is the case where if this fails, so do you want us to go to the other room yeah. or you want us to watch this? I'd love no, to see how this expands. No, but watch this if it open. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Once it is open, then we're just going to re-stent it uh, because it's a single layer. It would have been double layer, then we do IVBT, but this is a single layer. Uh, we are going to just re-stent it. And of course, we'll cover the distal moderate lesion also because we saw on the IVAS, a lot of plaque. Well, I mean, I'm hoping that this in the case it. of an under-expanded okay. stent, that a re-stenting yeah. should should do, okay. or maybe Negative. even maybe even a good balloon dilatation. But I saw a lot of tissue inside of the stent. No, I think you require yeah. another so, stent. Yeah, go up. No, but one and of course we have taken away all the coverings, and we have in, see we have to go slow. So no matter what you do, you get a three-o cutting balloon also. Although in, in the stand, it's I not going to I think a cutting now, balloon would be very we'll I, I was going to ask him next, the cutting balloon. Yeah, trio yeah. cutting balloon. Yeah, we are getting a four. Atmosphere, 22 atmosphere. Yeah, right. So we are, and otherwise also your balloons, when this happens, you go slowly. Keep going. One second. Negative, no. No, yeah. Yeah, so did not, moved out. Three, four, oh. You have three, oh, give me three, oh, right now. And then bring a four, oh, also. Okay, okay, then give a four, oh. This is a big case. Yeah, go up again, slowly. So that vessel, what was the kiski? What was the vessel size? Four, oh. Yeah, it's a very big vessel. No, didn't expand that. Negative. We need to go a little proximal, which is here. Yeah, that's the advantage or disadvantage of the short balloon also, it slips. Yeah. Keep going. The watermelon seeding is also the disadvantage yeah. of a shorter balloon, but yeah. it does give yeah. you that better direct pressure. Negative, yeah. So I think it's looking a little better. Let me just pull back here. Yeah, good. And we'll do the IVAS run uh, later also, make sure IVAS is clean. I know we've asked about uh, imaging and so, yeah, you know, that's okay. Uh, yes, a uh, lot of IVSs, we do it. Uh, we do it more as a part of the symposium. Uh, and I know that a uh, lot of IVS uh, uh, fanatics will do uh, multiple IVSs between various things, but that's okay. That's a different strategy, negative. But as long as whatever it does, you get a good result. That's what it matters. You go again. I think we opened it up now. Yeah. I think it expanded now. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 24. I'm still not convinced that it's expanded. I still see a little dog boning effect there in the middle. Yeah, yep, yep, negative. But I think now, no matter what you do, you'll not be able to take away the complete dog bone as long as we can get a good lumen, got about six millimeters square uh, and so post. But I think this definitely has opened up. Uh, we'll try to see if negative. Let's take a picture and then we decide uh, that we have a 4 uh, cutter open, uh, Wolverine, yeah, this it's can okay. come out anyway. Yeah, I'd like to see the 4 cutter there. Okay. I still don't think you're 
fully expanded. What What does everyone else think? Um, you guys feel satisfied or you no, want to no. see imaging? It, and it is a picture. No, it is not expanded. Yeah. Ivis. Everybody wants to see the Ivis. Yeah. Okay. But let's see first. If it opened up a little bit, then only go. No, yeah. It definitely has opened up. Yeah. Yeah, good. Let's do a cutter and then we do Ivis and then you can go to other room. So that's become a simple. This is a case just to highlight. No, I think you got it. But uh, now okay. you could see the distal lesion better <laughs> that needs to be covered yeah. now with the new stent. Yeah, no, yeah. But I, at least the stent has been expanded now and we are going to do 4 quickly and then do the Ivis and that is it. So you see the expansion. We know exactly what it is uh, beforehand and now. Now, question is to Colombo, I know he was very uh, big on this using a cutting balloon, but question is how will the cutting balloon work now when there is already a stent? Uh, we have used the uh, cutting balloon with the stent a lot. I think it's, uh, yeah, it gives yeah. more uniform force because the blade uh, keep uh, uh, the expansion uniform and not uh, uh, uneven like a, a high pressure balloon. So mm -hmm. the only thing uh, when you go to 24, 25 atmosphere, you have yeah, to downsize uh, because the cutting balloon has some <laughs> compliance. Otherwise you break the vessel. Yeah. Um, Dr. Sama, oh, good, when, yes. when they do the yeah. shock wave in the other institution, what size of shock yeah. wave balloon they use, do you know? Four -oh. They use a four -oh. four -oh balloon. They use a 4 balloon and they did whatever the 20, 30 uh, pulses pass. and so, but 4 -o. They used it with a 4 -o. yeah. They did not do the laser, but they used the shock wave. Yeah, they they the did not way. have, the center did not have both uh, uh, laser as well as rota available. Okay. Juan, would so a, uh, your approach be different? There is, a, there is a trick, maybe I should not mention, uh, it's, a, it's a very off label, but uh, in many places they don't have uh, a rotor blade or burst bigger than 1.75. They don't carry. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if uh, if you have a very big s situation like here, uh, you uh, go with the 1.5 balloon and you rotor blade with a 1.5 balloon inflated. Oh, lovely. And uh, believe it or not, the balloon will not break because it's soft. Mm. And the 1.5 okay. the the balloon makes the rotor blade yeah. bigger. We see the Ivis, we see oh. it looks a lot better, yeah. much better. A lot better, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I think you've expanded it, you know, but, but I think distal to the stent, there's a lesion. Yeah. I think now you're going to treat okay. the whole vessel well, right? Yeah, so I mean, clearly that the, it, uh, to me, just let's take a picture and then we cover that entire area. Uh, it's a large vessel. Go. We're still Good. on. At least the stand has been expanded. Yeah. Let's go. A lot of disease we know. We put a long stand. Did you hear that? Wonderful result. How did it yeah. work? I, I think very by heating, heating the metal, not by ablating, heating the metal. And we, if that's okay, Roxana, you are ready to go uh, into a Yes, we're ready to go. We know the, what you're going to do here. You're obviously going to treat the yeah. beautiful result. Thank you. Thank you so yeah, much. Not this is a across. difficult yeah. problem. Thank you.